Welcome back. Uh, this is Face the Nation. I start off uh, the uh, final round with uh, um, Asoko Besekara, Executive Director of uh, Transparency International. In all of this, uh, Asoka, we speak about of, uh, good governance, we speak of corruption. Uh, what is the lesson that we as a nation uh, are learning? Uh, are we learning anything at all from all this? I mean, I think the one thing that is clear is that uh, if we really want to deliver, and when I say, I mean, the, if the country is to benefit from this so-called good governance, brave steps need to be taken somewhere. And what that also means is, is that people, and I mean, within our entire political system, I mean, this is, this is all a, a set of friends almost, you know? I mean, they will need to see some of their other friends burn. And, I, and I'm not sure whether anyone really is willing to do that. There is mm -hmm. so much protection of one another that I mean will we ever see I, I mean the one the one thing is this I mean even when we, now when we look at things people say that uh, 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 things are dysfunctional but actually there's a lot of bureaucratic dysfunction because actually b many senior bureaucrats know that if ever uh, things change all of the politicians will back each other and the bureaucrats will be left to burn. So then what do the bureaucrats do? Instead of taking a decision, they set up some little committee underneath them. They push that decision down to that committee. They never push that c committee to come up. So I I there are some fundamental flaws here. And um, it, 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 it requires some courageous leadership. And I'm not sure whether we've really seen the leaders walking the talk. Um, also, the next few months is going to be quite crucial for Sri Lanka and also for the people. What must the people do? Watch and wait? Wait for an alternative to just come? A miracle to happen? Or what can they do? Well, I mean, they'll have to, the people will have to think very closely about what their, what their priorities are. I mean, I think the one thing to say is that Obviously, this panel here, we're speaking about governance-related issues. But ultimately, we've also got to be slightly mindful of one small issue, which is that you and I may agree that, let's say, if someone doesn't appoint their child, um, let's say if someone's a CEO of some, uh, some company and they don't appoint their child, you and I may think, my goodness, I mean, the, uh, uh, that person understands the independence and, uh, um, you know, uh, is, go is running their company well. But someone else, the other 99% of the country will say, my goodness, if this fellow is not looking after his own son, he w uh, will he ever look after me? So I mean, uh, this idea of um, the fact that citizens are looking for good governance and everything else, and I think Krishmal touched on it a little um, earlier, well, th thank you very much. It's not a, uh, it may not be as high a priority as it is to some of us. Uh, thank you very much, Asoka. But uh, before moving on to um, Krishmal Varasur, the attorney at law, one, one final question to you. Just a few weeks ago, there was some good news in your family. Uh, uh, your wife had a kid, uh, and uh, Asoka, uh, I just want to ask you, <laughs> do you fear the future of your child um, in a country like Sri Lanka? Because the question is, what is the future going to hold? Are you fearful for, for your child's future? Well, I mean, I would certainly, I mean, the, the one thing that I would never incentivize my son to do is to leave. He has to be part of the solution. But I would be very concerned. Because, you know, actually, you know, when we look at the bureaucracy even now, many people think, my goodness, it's dysfunctional. But actually, at the moment, our senior most bureaucrats are probably the last set of bureaucrats that knew a system that functioned well. <coughs> and they are just on their way out. So actually, um, I mean, not to sound uh, defeated, but if things aren't solved soon, th the trajectory is downward. And all of the incentives are not to, uh, not to be here. So, I mean, the things will need to have to ch change soon. And even when it comes to government service as well, Thank you the government much. needs to take some unpopular Thank decisions. You. Thank you very much, um, Asoko Vesegara, Executive Director of Transparency International. And congratulations, by the way. Uh, I now move to, um, I now move to um, Krishmal Varan, Suri Attorney at Law, uh, and also Joint Secretary of the People's Intellectual uh, Assembly. Uh, right after... Uh, 
Ravi Karunayak's resignation, you see many parliamentarians in the government, uh, representing the United National Party, made a huge cry about uh, the last two and a half years, uh, uh, people not being arrested, so on and so forth. And I'm trying to wonder, why did they wait until Ravi Karunayak resigned to ma make a huge cry about it? Your time starts now. Yeah. The answer lies, Shamir, because uh, as to why they waited for two and a half years, or uh, why we have been waiting up to now lies the answer lies in the constitution that we have made for ourselves this is what we Sri Lankans have said want to uh, uh, wish that our country be governed by article 27 these principles shall guide the parliament the president cabinet of ministers in the governance of Sri Lanka now what have we told that we want in this Promotion of welfare of the people by securing and I'll go as quickly as possible, looking at your clock. Protecting as effectively as possible a social order of justice, social, economic, political. The realization by all citizens of adequate standards of living. Now I want you all to question when I go through, have we got it? Housing, continuous improvement, living conditions. Rapid development of the whole country by means of public and private economic activity. Equitable distribution among all citizens of material resources of our country. Then, establishment of a just social order. Then, the state shall eliminate economic and social privilege and disparity and the exploitation of man by man or man by the state. Mm -hmm. Then, that the state shall also ensure operation of economic system, economic system that will not result in the concentration of wealth and the means of production to the common man's detriment. Have you got this? I want to ask you, from 1948, we've had governments, after governments, changing from green to blue and blue to green, and the reds have jumped in here and there. Have we got this? If you haven't, you need to question yourself as to why. Because the sovereign power to get to all this done lies in your hand, not in anyone else's hand, not the four of us. No other civil society, few, few hundreds, that will go to Vihara Madhavi Park and shout. It lies in your hands. And what are you doing about it to change? If you want this secured or a better system secured, maybe you will make a new constitution. I have seen the new draft also. That goes beyond this also. If you want all that, then you need to get up from your lounge chair where you just watch the news in the night and say, Ane pau ne, this has happened, no, and Ravi has resigned, no, or someone else has gone, no, and get up and do something about it. Until that happens, however much we shout with the good citizens of Sirasa who uh, bring this to your home every day, uh, nothing will change until uh, you uh, make uh, that Mr. Varun, before I move to um, Gehan uh, Gunasalaka from uh, Veritas Research, uh, who is the research director, uh, you say that the people have to exercise their franchise wisely yeah. and, and that's up to them and they have to make the wise choice. Um, my question to you is, did you uh, choose wisely on the 17th of August? Are, are you I disappointed uh, or are you satisfied the way in which you voted? Uh, Shamit, a quick, uh, quick yes and a no. I am not fully disappointed because we changed it from where it was to something a little bit better where at least you and I have the freedom now to talk. I appreciate that. But no, that you see, that is not something that a UNP or a PA government brought to you. That is how countries in the world are supposed to be run. So don't let them tell you because one of our ministers have resigned or because you all can now talk freely on Sira Sir without bombing Sira Sir that you all have got good governance. You haven't. That is not something they brought. That's what you brought upon this country. So, yes, we change it from somewhere here, below the doldrums to a bit, <laughs> bit above that. But there's a long way to go. Thank you very much, um, Krishna Varun. So, attorney at law and also joint secretary of the People's Intellectual Assembly. Uh, Gyan Gunatulaka, do you think from the frying pan to the fire or something better than that for us uh, as far as this government is concerned? I is there a silver lining? for Sri Lanka in the next few uh, months, uh, next few years? Uh, I tend to agree with uh, Krishmal on that point. I think uh, I, I certainly wouldn't want to go back to the pre-2015 era. Um, I think some very uh, serious and important steps in the right direction have been secured and freedom is, is one and that the liberty to speak, the freedom of expression, I think media freedom all of us know that is, is a much better state although there are certain threats uh, to that freedom. Um, I do think that we have moved in the right direction. 
Uh, but that's no reason to be complacent and that's no reason to be naive about how politicians will be politicians. Mm -hmm. That's no reason to be naive about how this whole uh, anti-corruption campaign has really been political show until so far and not really concrete in terms of criminal justice. So I think uh, while we must be happy with the little progress we've made, we can't be satisfied with it. We have to push this government. And I think what we have seen, and this is the silver lining I spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. what we have seen in terms of the reaction to the public outcry is something positive, not to give con congratulations to the government for, mm -hmm. but to really congratulate the people because they've, sh they've shifted something. They've shifted some culture because it, uh, there was a time in which government actors would have acted with complete impunity. Uh, there would be cries for resignation, but those cries would have been stamped out immediately. Uh, and there would have been reprisals. Uh, there would have been uh, certain vehicles of certain colors uh, visiting those people. And that, that was a reality that we can't forget because it was in, in, in the, during the last uh, five years that this, this took place. It wasn't so long ago. I think that Given the fact that we've moved in the right direction, we have to exploit this space to the maximum now. Because this government appears to be still responding to that Yahapalane rhetoric. Because the Yahapalane rhetoric, I think, belongs to the people and not to the government. And I think this whole episode has demonstrated that. So uh, there is a silver line. Uh, and you mean to say that the people have still, they still have hope uh, in Yahapalane? I think they must have hope because Yahapalane is of the people. They have to have hope in themselves and thank not you. necessarily in politicians. Um, thank you very much, um, Gihan Gunathalaka, Research Director of Weighted Research. Uh, thank God you uh, agreed with uh, Krishmal on, on the <laughs> points that he made, <laughs> because just a couple of <laughs> minutes ago, <laughs> he wanted to <laughs> kill you, Gihan. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much, uh, Gihan, I'm for your thoughts. Threat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I now move my attention to um, Mr. Azad Sali, uh, the uh, leader of the National Unity Alliance, and not forgetting he was also uh, the former Deputy Mayor of the Kalama Municipal Council. Um, also uh, was imprisoned uh, during the previous regime. Uh, my question to you is very simple, Mr. Saleh. Uh, there's always, you, you have to look at it as an optimist because you have been battered by the previous regime. Uh, you made a statement, you came back to Colombo, and there you go, we saw you in prison. And then as a result of that, you were hospitalized for many weeks. Um, we saw your family members uh, having press conferences to secure your release. Um, it was not an easy task for you. It was a difficult run for you. Uh, and now you are here making statements and reprimanding the government, the president, the prime minister, so on and so forth, very candidly. What do you have to say? This is what we expected and we got it, but they have not done enough, isn't it? Actually, Samir, all of us fought for something. Even during the previous regime, after the 2010 elections, mm -hmm. we were telling the government what they should be doing. But everybody, as Gihan said, we don't want to go into that era. This is what everybody says. But you can see them becoming very popular and very strong due to the government not taking any action against them. Now, as you said, why was I arrested? For doing what? Am I a terrorist? Or was I a terrorist? Was anything done, any wrong done by me? No. I only made a statement at a seminar in India that don't push the minorities to the wall. Already we have a problem. 30 years of war, we have just finished it and trying to take another community there and don't allow the young youngsters to take into guns. That's only a precautionary measure that I wanted the government to take. But Gotabe, who did not understand this, did he, somebody went and told him, so immediately I was arrested. But I must thank everybody who was involved, especially the media, your media, the role they played. Newspapers, your media's role was splendid. Nobody can match that. And the support that you gave my family. Not only that, the Canadian Prime Minister went to the UN and spoke of me. Like that, several ca countries made statements, ambassadors of various countries made statements and that is how I was released after eight days. I was starving to death and then I was back to in hospital. But all that struggle, why did we do is we wanted not the change for myself, but this country needed the change. We all got together and bought the change and where are we today? 
the people who bought the chain are outside the previous fellows who robbed the country are back in parliament and back in the government and people those are the people who are deciding things for everybody as gehan very rightly said yahan palne is not the government yahan palne belongs to the people and this struggle will continue tomorrow also we will start this agitation only to see that good governance is put on the right track uh, uh, miss ali what would have happened if you were so candid during the previous regime my god you you know and no, tell us tell us uh, 95 everyone is looking for an alternative now in 95 country, in 95 where what happened or when i was again in the opposition the i was cut 11 people cut me 21 shot you see my head my stomach my leg 21 <laughs> places in my body was cut 21 days in the intensive care that's how i came out after that the rajabaksha regime chandrika's time that was then it was it was not the chandrika's government it was the unp group that tried to kill me that time also it was not chandrika's but during that period after that i was taken to hospital thanks to anurag bandar nayak who came there as speaker he gave three of his body guard that night also they tried to kill me at the general hospital i escaped there from there i was transferred immediately to jayawardenapura there also they tried to kill me so i came out of a big thing and then after this the rajabaksha regiment put me inside eight days of imprisonment with all that we came out we all got together bought in the change but what happened end of the day people are the losers people who voted for this government are today telling us whenever we are go to the east or wherever we are no, because, because i am I'm one person who campaigned Ali. all over the country no i'm i'm posing this question to mr ali because we see members of the joint opposition acting as if nothing happened we, we saw even the uh, former president making statements saying during my time i never attacked uh, undergraduates uh, during my time uh, it was never like this but people have forgotten the past that's what i i in fact pose this question did, did you did you watch the statement your your media yeah. carried it he came to kalutara for a function there the media went to him he said i have in the last two and a half years not voted for any anything in parliament so if there's a no confidence against ravi i am not going to vote i have never voted i'm not going to vote i have already made that's in the afternoon I have already made a group. He accepted that. I in my first speech I said he accepted that he has broken the CLP and he has formed a different group. Then evening again he goes for another function. Then they ask him. I saw him. I think I I don't know whether he was drunk, but I saw him drunk. No, you can't. Then you can't. You can't I'm, say I'm, that. No, 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 no